So now we're exploring Paulette's portfolio, and immediately I'm struck by the the interact or the dynamic background look, which look like planets floating around the universe. This is really good. I also like the color palette. It's not aggressive on the eyes. It's, it's calming, uh, and it has that sort of professional feel. The top left, we have a logo with sort of uh, looks like an event horizon type color of logo, which I like. Um, keeps in the theme of the actual portfolio itself. And then we have the home about me projects and contact navbar, which is nicely spaced out at the top. Great. So we can see that we have a, a structure here and immediately your sort of your eyes are drawn to this H1 here, which is hello, my name is Paulette Flores. I design and build web applications. Great. So we know immediately what it is that Paulette is wanting this portfolio to convey and what it is that she does, which is excellent. Now I hazard a guess that with this, it's going to be a single page. And I think single page portfolios, in my opinion, and that's just my opinion, I think single page portfolios are probably the best for this because they have, they're really smooth, they're snappy, and they keep the interest of the user on the page without heavy loading times. So let's click the About Me. Brilliant, and we're nicely drawn down to the About Me section. So we have a, a bio, if you like, about Paulette, and we can read this information here. So I'm just going to quickly scan through this now. Great, so I've read this, and I get the understanding that Paulette is an educator, she's a front-end developer, she's got a varying variety, well, she's got a variety of different experiences and skills, and she's really keen on helping other people produce uh, front-end work and excel in what they want to do as well. And as, a, as an educator, I get that from her, her bio, which is great. And I like the fact that we have an image of her, so we get to see a little bit more about her. We get, now we're building a picture. And I think with portfolios, this is really important. Okay, so um, if we go to, we'll go to projects in a minute, but I'm scrolling down immediately drawn by uh, Paulette's toolbox. Okay, so if we click front end, great, we can see the different different programs and the software, should I say, that Paulette is actually um, fluent with and, and can use. So this is really encouraging. One thing I will say is that for non-techies out there that are what that are looking at this, it might be worth giving an explanation as to what these icons are. Some of us will know that JavaScript, maybe HTML, CSS, uh, what these images are, but maybe you could put a title tag or some kind of pop-up which would explain that actually this is uh, React, for example. So that's something that we you could look at. So this is front-end. Back-end, my goodness, you've, you've also got a number of skills back-end as well. So this is quite an important and quite an interesting element that you bring to the table for, from a development toolbox point of view. And then other tools, again, I recognize Figma, REST API, uh, Netify, um, the other ones I'm not entirely sure. So give us an indication of what these tools are. That would be really helpful. In the most part, technical people will be reviewing this, so they might know, but it might not be the case. I click on projects. And here we are. We're now at the meat um, of the, the the portfolio itself. This is the the really important part of the portfolio. These projects are critical for you to be able to convey your skills and expertise. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through these projects and have a look and discuss them, and, and I'm going to give you my viewpoint on each one. Okay. So the first project, I think immediately what we have here. Well, before we get to the first projects is we've just given four boxes. Now, I'm hovering over them and I can see there's uh, 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 some sort of hover status that's been put on these boxes um, and there's a cursor pointer as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm hazarding the guess that I can click on it. Um, maybe you can make this more explicit. And also, what's the, what, what is the project name? I want to sort of know what I'm clicking into. That would be really helpful, a bit of an explanation as to what this is. So I'm clicking onto it now. Okay, right. So now I'm given an explanation. Health Pocket, a mobile application that allows you um, to upload, translate, and share medical documents. Okay, interesting. Again, Paulette, I don't know if this is something that you've designed. This is something that a client has given you um, something uh, in terms of a brief and you've executed on that. I don't know this, if this is a project from a boot camp. 
it would be really interesting to know what it was that uh, this where this came from. So potentially you could include it in this modal here. Also, I would highlight the technologies that you used for this specific build. I think that's important as well. So for example, if you built this with React, then I would mention that you've built this with React. So list the technology. And if you can, give a little bit of a brief as to what it was that you're actually tasked to do. So that's something I would do here. Okay, well, I'm not gonna look at the GitHub. All I'm gonna do is go and click on the, uh, I assume this is the live um, project. So I'm gonna click on this. Again, you might want to make this explicit. I've clicked on this and I'm given a health pocket, health companion load up. Okay, right. Now at the moment, I've clicked on this. Okay, that loads, that reloads. Ah, there's a login detail here. Okay, with this type of project, I'm not gonna log in and I would think it would be safe to say that I think most people would not log in to a project like this. And it's not because the project is bad, it's just because, for example, if you, you send this to a hiring manager, they might not know who you are really. Yes, you've applied for a job, but you're giving them an email and you're putting in a password. What's happening with that information and what are you getting? So I think you need to be careful with this. It would be good if you could maybe put a video of a live demo or some sort of screenshot or an explanation as to what it is. If you go back, an explanation is to actually, what is this that we're accessing? I need to know. I had to look around and find the login button on desktop. Maybe it's different on mobile, but I think you need to really hold the hand of the user here because um, I'm not sure about this and I'm certainly not going to put my details and log in. So that's something to bear in mind. So let's go back <clears throat> and let's have a look at another project. This one here, top right. This looks like it's food orientated, which is always a winner. Very Fior, okay. Very Fior is a landing page for a Mexican sweets company in San Diego. Well, I love Mexican food, absolutely. When I was in San Diego, I, that's all I ate. Um, and let's let's look, I'm excited about this. What have we got? Indulge in the taste of Berry Fior, where every treat is a sweet fiesta. Right, I'm sold. What do I do? Okay, so what do we do? We do custom sweets, special editions, daily menu. I love the, the animations. I like this, this is really cool. And you have a menu, superb, excellent, perfect. Okay, well let's let's just go to, let's try the cheese cheesecake um, cup. So I can hover over that. There's just a couple of things, I guess when you hover over, there's the white text, there's, there's, there's some issues there. Maybe you could put sort of a, 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 a div behind it with a bit of an opacity or maybe make the images bigger or just make sure that that, that, that text can be read. <clears throat> um, let's have a quick look now. We cater for, uh, okay, snack bar with a variety of toppings, what's inside. Okay, great, I like the modal, that's cool. That comes up, that's really good. And then Instagram, we've got lots of stuff on Instagram. Perfect. Oh, that takes me to Instagram. We're not going to go there just yet, but great. And then a contact us form and fantastic. You got more contact information, opening hours, location, Gmail. Um, yeah, perfect. Right. Okay. Let's just go back up. Ready menu. <clears throat> oh, hello. It's loading up now. We're getting a menu. So as this loads up, I think that, yeah, this is, this is looking really interesting. And what I would say is, is just it's just the little details. I know it's obviously these can be missed, but the little details of uh, the text on the images, they, they are very, very important. Um, now I've clicked on that and nothing's happened. So oh, I see, okay, right. Yeah, they're anchor tags. So um, perfect, uh, ready menu, that takes you back up. That's the ready menu. Okay, good. So I, I like the smooth scrolling, uh, the con you know, it, it works, it works. Maybe I'd probably get rid of uh, the email if you got the contact me just for security reasons but again I'm being pedantic but this is great this is this is nice and 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 um you know as a landing page it's uh, it's got lots of potential what I would say again going back to this is let's hear about let's see the technologies used was this is this actually a place is this actually is this a, is this a client that's asked you to do this so that's something to bear in mind let's go down to easy cocktails Fantastic, like it. Easy Cocktails is a website where you can search your favorite cocktail recipes and retrieve cocktail data supplied by bar, bar, bar. Okay, right, I'm not sure 
Oh, I see. That's where you got the cocktail data. Right, so I'm assuming you've maybe used an API, but let's click onto it. Let's have a look. Easy cocktail. Search for a cocktail. Wow. Okay, right. Let's just have a quick look. That's great. Grizzly bear. Oh, yeah. That's, that's cool. I like that. So it gives you the ingredients. Cool. So this is this is like a this is like a go-to for getting your ingredients for, for making a cocktail. This is really good. I like this. I like this. It's nice and quick. Search for a cocktail. Um, is Bloody Mary one? I'm gonna say, I bet you have. I bet you. Oh yes, yes. Wow. Okay. Really impressed with this. I like Bloody Marys. These are great. The, the more spice, the better. Tab Tabasco sauce, etc. Um, I really like this. I think this is really good, and I like the drop-down options, non-alcoholic, my goodness. Well, of course, but you've got the option. Um, uh, wow, coffee, tea, I see what you're doing here. So, yeah, this this is potential, and I really like this 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 project, Pauletta. I think this is excellent. Um, again, I'd love to know more about the technologies. Is this something you're going to implement in the future? As a client asked you for this, you get my gist. I know, I know I'm repeating myself, but um, I think that's important because um, you've produced something quite interesting here. And Promptory is a dictionary app that shows the definition, images, audio pronunciation, and parts of speech of a word using the Pexels and Dictionary API. Great, so we've got a little bit more detail here, and I'm starting to put together some ideas about the, the technologies used, but, but what is this for? Is this something you created? Was it a brief from a client? I don't know. Right, so compass. Ah, oh, okay. So this gives you a lot of information. Um, let's put in uh, computer. Oh wow, fantastic! Well, what's this? Computer. Computer. Fantastic. Right. Okay. But yeah, excellent, 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 excellent. This is really, Buddha. This is really good. This is, Pauletta. This is excellent. I like this a lot. I like the background. I think that's an interesting take on 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 the uh, on the app, the, the text. It has a sort of a an oldie world feel with some of the text. I think I know what you've gone for here, and um, you know it does what it says on the tin, and it's fast, it's responsive, it's a nice it's a nice application to have. And and also I think what I like about this is is that I've looked at lots of portfolios, but I've not really seen a project too much like this one. So, in fact, I've, I've not really seen uh, a cocktail project before, like the one you've done either. So I think you've got a good few projects here which are very different from, from other portfolios. And I think that should be a unique selling point for your portfolio. I really do. That you, You're thinking outside the box and creating new ideas. Um, and then the contact me section. Yeah, absolutely. You've got, you've got coding skills and, you know... My goodness, you know, get contacting Pauletta. Takeaways from this. First of all, let's let's start off with the, the positives here. The positives are that this website, this portfolio that you've built, Paulette, is really streamlined. Uh, again, it's, it's quite focused in regards to what it is that you're showing. You are showing that you are a front-end developer and you can create lots of really interesting software solutions. Um, we get to know who you are and we get to see some of the projects that you've produced. The only area I would say that needs improvement is your projects. These are standout. You've created some good projects here. So speak about them more. Let, and, and the way that I would structure this maybe is this. I would suggest that you um, start off with brief. What was the task? What was the idea of this, uh, this project? Were you briefed by a client or was this something you came up with? Then number two, come up with a rationale as to how you actually attacked or tried to think about solving this problem or this brief. So talk about what you, your ideas were, design ideas, where you would do it, what technology would you use. Then think about the method, methodology. And the methodology was what you actually did to get this to get this done, to get it up and running, to get that project complete. And then talk about any results that you had or any feedback that you've had or any learnings that you've had and put that in the information, put that in the information that you have within here, within this modal, for example, or you know, at least have a title, have a bit of a description and maybe some information on each. I think that would be really good. Just give more context to the projects 
and you've got a really strong portfolio. It's really, really interesting. And I think that you've put a lot of effort into this and it just needs a few tweaks in my opinion. And, um, you know, I wish you the best of luck with it, Paulette. I really do. I think you've been, uh, you've done a really good job with this and I've enjoyed reviewing it. And some of it has inspired me uh, with my portfolio as well. So thank you so much for sending it in to me. And that reminds me, if you have a portfolio and you've been watching this, whether you're a front-end developer or a digital marketer, please send it my way and I'll be happy to, re to review it and have a look at it and show everybody else what you've created and I'll give you some feedback as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll be posting probably again this time next week. So take care. Good luck with your portfolio building. Speak soon. Bye.